let's stand your feet and begin to sing this song. Praise the name of Jesus evermore. Hallelujah. Jesus is so good. Praise the name of Jesus evermore. Let this name of
this awesome night that we can come and worship Jesus, Son of the living God, King of kings and Lord of lords tonight. We thank you for you so love us. You send him to die for us and whosoever believe in him shall have, shall have eternal life, shall not perish. And we give thanks, O God, for your Son this evening. In the name of Jesus tonight, God Almighty, we, hallelujah, bring all of us before you in prayer and pray for each and every one of us, God, your mighty hands to be upon us. Pray that, God, you give us wisdom in all things, God, understanding and knowledge. Almighty God, tonight we want to bring also Sister Juliet before you and thank you, God, for helping her and Thank you, God, for speedy recovery. And Lord, we continue to commit her to you and pray for your total uh, recovery and healing for her in the name of Jesus. Even tonight we pray and remember, Lord Almighty, our family who do not know you. And we bring them all before you and pray by the Holy Spirit that you will speak to them and you will touch them wherever they may be. Lord, while they are driving in their work, God, when they see the things that are happening in this world, Lord, speak to their heart, God, about their sins, about eternity, death, hell, and heaven. Oh, Lord, we pray, God, for them, God, this evening in Jesus' name. Also, we pray, God, hallelujah, for all the churches represented, all the pastors and their families, their congregation before you, we pray, God, for your hands of covering and protection upon them. And everyone who have a need here, Lord, God, we pray that your name be glorified to them, that you make yourself personal and known to each and every one of us this evening. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray in us. Amen. Amen. Let's give a big clap to the Lord. Amen. You can be seated. Who's I saying? Who's I saying? Thank you. This thing, check one two. Okay, so praise God. So update, Sister Juliet. She's up and about, able to walk a little bit, able to sit down. So she's doing fine. Uh, Friday, most probably, she will be discharged uh, from the hospital. So again, just thank you for praying for her. Amen. So. Um, let's go before God uh, in prayer and in giving this evening. Let's pray, Father, tonight as we uh, give unto your works. We pray for your blessing upon each and every one of us who give of their finances, Lord, as they give willingly to you. Lord, pray more mightily among your people. Lord, bless them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. This thing, this thing. Let's turn to First Peter 4, 7. The book of First Peter, chapter 4, verse 7. Okay. It says there, but the end of all things is at hand. Uh, therefore, be serious. Amen. 
and be watchful in your prayers. So tonight uh, I want to look with you at one verse from uh, the fourth chapter of First Peter. It's verse 7. In that verse, uh, there's a word there that I would like to draw your attention to and speak to you and explain on it. And that word is the word watchful. Verse 7 is a verse that speaks about when you see that the end of things is near as we are living in today's world. The end of things is nearer than, than any time in history. So many negative things happening in the world we're living in. Here Peter tells us uh, to be, or two things to be. And uh, he not only tells us to be serious, but also he tells us to be watchful. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and then be watchful in your prayers. Now, in the Bible, there are many be, be. Okay, there are many be, be faithful, be loyal, be strong, be grateful, be faithful, be holy, be kind, be merciful. Be generous, you know, be obedient. The Bible is full of be, calling you and I to be. Okay? And Peter here um, begin to just give us two more. Be, be serious, and then be watchful. <coughs> be serious means uh, don't play play, okay? Don't play play with your Christian walk. It's like an um, example would be a married man cannot behave like a bachelor. Okay, if you're married, uh, you have to be, you, your whole singlehood life is, is past. You cannot behave like a bachelor. Or if you are sane, you cannot behave like a sinner. Okay. So, anyway, the other B is to be watchful. As he asks us to be serious, he so asks us to be watchful. Uh, and by that, it means uh, be a watchful Christian. Okay? If you are a serious Christian in your Christian walk, you are to be a watchful Christian. Now, watching is one act we find that the Bible, time and time again, asks of us to do. And one of the, uh, those who strongly urge us to do that is none other than Jesus himself. We find that Peter also does that in our text here. And we find that also uh, Paul does that. But among uh, them, we find that Jesus himself he calls us to be always watchful. Matthew twenty four forty two. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doeth come. Matthew twenty four here twenty forty three, uh, forty one forty. There he speaks about uh, when the Lord comes. Two people, two men will be in the field. One will disappear, the other one left behind. Two women, one woman disappeared, the one left behind. And then he goes on to say in verse 42, Watch therefore, Jesus says to his disciples, For you know not what hour your Lord doeth come. Again in Matthew 25, 13, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Again, he began to use the word watch. You do not know when the hour Jesus comes, but before he comes, he calls us to be always watchful. Matthew 26, 41, again, watch and pray 
that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay, so uh, I just uh, mentioned to you a few of them that came out from the mouth of your Savior, your Master himself. Um, then we have Paul, Apostle Paul. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch you. Stand fast in the faith. Quick you like men, be strong. Paul also uses the word watch. Again, 1 Thessalonians 5, again speaking about uh, the time that uh, Christ will come like a thief in the night. And he says to us, in verse 6, Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch. Okay? So asking us not to spiritually be asleep, but asking us to watch. And here, Peter, 1 Peter 4, 7, be serious, be watchful. Now the word watch has the meaning of watching over something or someone closely. So this word watch has that meaning. It is an act that is not uh, without purpose, it's not an act that is aimless, but it's an act that is, that is filled with many uh, good reasons to why God asks us to watch. For example, if you are taking your children out for, to the shopping mall or the shopping center, uh, you watch over them. Okay? Your eyes are always watching over them because you know okay, they may get lost or you know someone may come along and just pull them by their hands and drag them and take them away. Okay? So uh, uh, you have a heart of an eyes or mind of watchfulness. Okay? Uh, if you are uh, a guard, you will be keeping watch to see that uh, no thieves enter and steal your things away. It is an understanding that uh, you have something precious. You have something that's of great value. And you understand that that which you have, if you don't watch closely over it or guard it, it can be taken away from you. You can lose it. Okay? And because of that, you watch closely. Okay? You, you, you take measures or action to see that it is protected. Lest you, uh, when you fail to do it, you live a life of regret. Uh, in hell, the people that are there will be forever regretting. There will be the emotions of most people who are there. They fail to watch. And because of that, failing to watch over that which is important, uh, forever they'll be living a life of regret. So it is to keep watch over something or over someone closely. Now, we're going to look at uh, how this is achieved or, or what does it mean when he says to you and I to be watchful. Okay. Firstly, what he means is when he asks ask from us to be watchful, he's asking firstly that we begin to look out for our own weaknesses. Okay. Our own weaknesses. Like Jabez, last Wednesday we talked about Jabez. Okay, we saw last week that he he's a watchful person, and that we see through the through what he prays. Okay, because when he prays, he not only asks God to bless him, not only asks God to enlarge him, not only asks the Lord's hands to lead him, but the final prayer that he prayed was God keep me from evil, lest I cause pain to others. He, he knows his, his weakness. 
he knows what kind of uh, what kind of heart he can he can be or what kind of person he can be that is he knows that he can cause pain to others and therefore he prays god keep me from evil lest i cause pain to others okay so we find that Jabez, when he prays that God will keep him from evil so that he does not cause pain to others, and we heard that God granted him what he asked for, it speaks about a man okay, who is matured. A man who has arrived to a place of maturity, who, who has grown up into mature thinking. And, and as I shared last week, God uh, could only bless a matured person. Okay? An immature person, God cannot give uh, what he wants to give to him or her if that person is immature. So God grant him and he speaks about his maturity and he speaks about a man who's watchful. Being reason, he looks out for his own weakness. He does not go around looking out for the weaknesses of others. But if he does come across, he understand that God shows him for a reason so that he, he can bring it to God in prayer, in intercession, praying for that person. But in any case, Jabez is an example of a watching person. And that is he looks out for his own weaknesses and he will take action or to uh, do something about it, he will be like maybe Jabez, ask God to keep him from evil. He will pray that God will keep him from evil. Or he will be like Joseph, he run, he run for, from Potipiah. He knows he's weak in that area, you know. And, and when Potipiah's wife tried to seduce him, he cannot, he cannot have a prayer meeting there. He cannot try to reason with, uh, with Potipiah's wife. He knows his, he's a man. He knows that if he stays there too long, he's going to fall. So he runs away or he cries out to God for mercy. Okay? He asks God, God, be merciful to me. Okay? Please help me, God. Show mercy to me. I know who I am. I know what I am. I, I know my, my limitation. It is an understanding that you yourself, when we are called to be watchful, that you yourself have weaknesses, no matter how strong you may be, okay? uh, how, how spiritual you may be, okay? uh, that, that you can have a weakness to fall in the pride. Okay? You can have a weakness to, uh, become, uh, to, 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 uh, to say something wrong. Okay? The story of Samson. It's a story about a man who failed to be watchful. Failed to see that he himself, you know, he has weaknesses. Though he's strong, we know he's strong. The Spirit of the Lord come upon him, he can do things that no man can do. The strongest man in the whole of the Bible is Samson. But Samson, in his strength, he failed to watch over his weaknesses. And because he failed to watch over his weaknesses, he begins to, to take, you know, Delilah for granted. When Delilah, you know, he, he cannot even see through. He was so blind to Delilah, you know. Uh, what Delilah is trying, Delilah is trying to get at him, you know. He tried to weaken him and he's so blind that he cannot see, you know. been reason, he has failed to watch and fail to understand that you know he has weaknesses and he needs to walk. That means uh, he should have. Oh, Lila, I know what you're doing. I better get out from you. It means there are places you don't go. Okay, uh, no matter how strong you are, no matter how how many hours you pray, you know there are places you don't go. There are people that you don't mix around. There are. Things you don't watch, you know, you don't, you don't watch. I uh, was listening to uh, David Wilkerson, this, this preacher, 
the cross and the switchblade. How many read that book before? Okay, uh, one, two of you. And this uh, this pastor, he would go into the gangster area, Nikki Cruz or something like that, and how he began to impact uh, what happened. Get many saved. Those gangsters got saved. And then uh, here I was listening to a sermon uh, just last night and he was talking about, uh, about a, a wife of a, of a husband calling her and saying, my husband, something is wrong with him. And, um, and uh, he always locks the door. He always locks the door and hide inside. It's not like that before. It's like, uh, they are Christians, but and then one day he forgot to close the door, and he just she just passed by and saw that she's he's looking at something that he should not be looking at. And uh, he she went in. She she spoke to the husband. You know this is not right. You're watching things you should not watch. And uh, what happened is that uh, this man began to. Uh, this wife began to call the Wilkerson and, and Wilkerson asked the man to go and see him and spend two days with him but this man was so caught up in this watching that thing that he later divorced his wife and married a witch you know and um, this man was a pastor uh, he got himself looking at things he should not look Okay, maybe he thought that, you know, he's strong enough. Yeah, nothing. I just watch, you know, and I'll just, I won't see it again. But he failed to understand. Okay, when it comes to these things, you got to flee. You got to run as quick as possible. Even you fast 40 days and 40 nights, it's not going to help you. Joseph flee. Joseph ran. So be watchful is about knowing this evening, looking out okay, for your own weaknesses and acting upon it in whatever way you, know, uh, you can so that your weaknesses does not control you and destroy your life. Okay? So, uh, even Paul, 1 Corinthians 9, 27, and he practiced what he preached by being watchful. But I discipline my body, bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. What, what, words, what words coming out from this man of God went to paradise three times, hear and see things that, you know, by his handkerchief, demons comes out. But yet they say, I discipline my body. I know my body. This body of mine, I know what, what it's capable of doing. I discipline my body. I bring it into subjection. I don't let it control me. Lest when I preach to others about Jesus Christ, I myself should become disqualified. Also today, I'm listening to another preacher and uh, who died last year and tremendous preaching you know it's just like this Ravi Zacharias you all heard of him you all heard him preach before what just so so he seems so anointed you know words just flow out so nicely so you know so well so so orderly, so, so inspiring. But that man, as you know, when he passed away, things begin to come out in the open. His handphone, he has 200 over, I think, massage parlors, that numbers of massage parlors. He will always go for massage. But what does, what does a man of God doing in the massage parlor? You know, Massage parlor, a woman massaging a man. A lot of things can happen. And this man, uh, he's, he failed to watch. Okay, he failed to see that despite his strength, 
There is he himself, there's weaknesses, and he failed to guard it. Watchful is about an understanding that we ourselves have weaknesses, and we are careful or we pay attention to it, knowing that if we do not, our weaknesses will lead us to the wrong path. I want to look secondly at what watchfulness means is that you will not allow yourself to become too overconfident or become an overconfident Christian. Overconfidence is pride. And before destruction comes, usually pride comes first. Before something is destroyed, usually the first thing that happens, pride comes first before destruction. And by watchful, it means you pay attention to see that you yourself will not allow yourself to become one. This is especially when things are going well, especially when things are going your way, especially when blessings begin to overflow, just begin to overflow from you. That we and you and I can become overconfident. Revelation chapter 3, 14 to 22. Jesus there speaks about the church of Laodicea, which fails to watch over the issue of overconfidence, the reason of their wealth. Testing one, two. I think. This thing, one, two, check. This thing, this thing, okay. So, it means you, Laodicean Church in Revelation 3, this is what they say to themselves because you say, verse 17, I am rich, increased with goods. Have need of nothing. Knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable and poor, and blind and naked. I will counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that you may be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be cloth, clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye sleep, that you mayest see. They were saying that they were rich. They have need of nothing. But God says that, you know what, you are miserable, you are poor, you are blind, you are naked. They fail to watch over their overconfidence, their pride. Okay? Especially when things are flowing, going your way. There's a king called King Uzziah. In the book of Second Chronicles 26, the Bible says he was only 16 years old when he became king. And God begins to, when he seek the face of God, when he always pray, when he always go before God, um, you know, when he always looks to God, whatever he does, he prays, he seeks God's face. He, he would be always in church if he's in today's time. And the Bible says because he seek God, God began to prosper him. He became a builder, a very great, even built engines. The word engines is found there in 2 Chronicles 26. These engines can shoot stones to the enemy. He began to build cities, build walls. He's so good at that. A builder and also an inventor, like he's an engineer or something like that, but so wise. But the scripture says in verse 16, but when he was strong, but when he was capable, but when he was able, when he was successful, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he, did, he transgressed against the Lord his God, went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. It's not so, something he's supposed to do. He he overrides his position. He went against the priests. 
he, he challenged the priests. He never challenged the priests. He never, never point your finger at the priests. Never shout at the priests. Never. Anyway, he went and burned incense upon the altar of incense. And Azariah the priest went in after him. Four score priests. One score is how many? Uh, Sixteen. Four score is how many? Four, six, twenty-four, sixty-four. Sixty-four of them uh, were valiant men, and they withstood him and say unto him, It appertaineth not unto these, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron. They are consecrated to burn. This is the priest's work, the priest's job, not your job. But he became so lifted up in, in pride and overconfidence that, that he feel that he can bypass and take things into his own manner. And when they were speaking, the Bible says that Uzziah became very angry. You see, overconfidence and pride can lead you in that path. Angry with the priest, then immediately leprosy uh, rose up in his forehead. Leprosy began to stroke his forehead. And he died. What a sad thing. Yeah. King Uzziah had failed to be watchful yeah, when he became uh, successful. When he uh, and success caused him to become so overconfident. One look thirdly about what it means to be watchful and that is to watch out for the fate of others, for the fate of your brothers and sisters in Christ. As you watch out for your own, you also watch out for your brothers and sisters in Christ, their fate. This involves more than just, it will include prayer, it will include intercession, interceding, and God will at times put people into your heart so that you will pray for them. But he also means, Galatians 6, to carry each other's burden or bear each other's burden. There's a story in the book of Acts 11. The Bible tells us in that story from verse 27 to verse 30, now in these days, prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them named Agabus stood up, foretold by the Spirit that there would be a great famine over all the world. This took place in the days of Claudius. So the disciples determined everyone according to his ability to send relief to the brothers living in Judea. And they did so, sending it to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul. Here is about seeing a need, responding to it. And the word relief is means, relief means, because the Bible says here, that they be determined to send relief to the brothers living in Judea. The word relief means it could be speaking about um, practical existence, not just in word and prayer. It's, it's good to say, I'll pray for you, brother. Okay, you know food, huh? Okay, I'll pray that you get food. God to send in ravens to your, to your home morning and night. It's good to pray, but this is not just about prayer. Is about uh, seeing a need, and it, it can be about finances. It, got, it can be about food. Okay, it can about be about clothing, things that they need. is is about uh, raising money to help to support. 
The word relief, other words, speaks about same meaning as relief, help, aid, assistance, care, subsidy, benefit, gifts, donations, financial assistance, a helping hand. I guess the, the, the priests and the Levites that saw a man being robbed, probably they just say a prayer and went their way. But the Samaritan man stood, stopped. And we know the story, he took oil, he bandaged that man, he gave aid, help, took the man to the hotel inn, whatever spent, charge it, let me know how much. Romans 12, 15, rejoice with them that do rejoice. But it also says, weep with them that weep. Cry with them that cry. Okay. Rejoice. This part, we all like it. We all rejoice with those who rejoice and God answer their prayer. They become successful. Praise the Lord, happy. But also another side whereby those who are weeping and weep with them that weep. But in any case, being watchful is about watching out for the faith of brothers and sisters in Christ as well. It's like maybe you see someone not in church. Okay? Don't just let the pastor be the one that gives them a call and find out, hey, what happened? Are you okay? You know, you can give a call to them yourself. Say, I didn't see you for some time. Is everything okay? You know. So it's about watching out. In what you. Okay, they are your brothers, they are your sisters in Christ. And you are helping to watch out for them to see that uh, they too, okay, they too will make heaven their home. So <clears throat> this evening, uh, be serious, but also be watchful. Amen. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father, we thank you for this uh, word from you that speaks to even myself about the need to be a watchful Christian. Watching out our own personal weaknesses. Watching out so that we will not become an overconfident Christian watching out for our brothers and sisters in Christ if there's more that I didn't say maybe watching our own heart from becoming bitter watching our mind so that we see that our mind don't be filled with with dirty things or watching even the words of our mouth. But in any case, Lord, uh, help us all to be a watchful Christian. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give a big clap to the Lord. Amen. God bless you. I sing now. Joy, joy, be the Tai Seng Di. Tai Seng Di, Jack. This thing one, two. This thing one, two. You go lay by ga. Lay by the volume. Testing one two. Check one two.